Awo, Shalom, Shalom Rastafari. Let us review where we were at. All right, the first thing that we need to do is to go over some of the basics, right? Now, this is the basics on this uh, ET, this ET extraterrestrial, the extraterrestrial lesson. So let's review. We said ET, all right? ET stands for, most people think, extraterrestrial. But let's make a note that there's a difference between the celestial or the star beings when we speak about so-called aliens from outer space or other beings from other worlds, they are not properly extraterrestrials. I know a lot of folks have been taught this and made to believe it. They've seen it in movies. they read a whole bunch of books. But if they would just study the etymology of words, since the word in the beginning was the word and the word was with God, the true Ha Elohim, and the word was the Ha Elohim. And we're going to understand that the word here in the Elohim, according to the Christian, as well as the true Jew, is the Trinity. You understand? The true Trinity, or what one may call the Jewish Trinity, and that word we know from Christianity in truth based on the Bible is Christ. And Christ now in Revelation 3 and 14 is the Amen. And the Amen was the ancient god of the Egyptians known as the Hidden One. And this is why so many people can't find it, because it is hidden, but it's found through the word or the logos or the logic. And if you don't understand, just check this out. Take this down. It's very important to take this down right here. What we have here and see the first part or the part one of this particular lesson, because what we're going to learn now is that the ET is called the extraterrestrial, but the extraterrestrial, what does extraterrestrial mean? The extraterrestrial means extra. What is extra? Extra added, additional, in a sense to say above, you understand, the terrestrial. Now, we were studying Genesis. The last part, we had ended off studying Genesis. Let us just review the Genesis lesson. That was Genesis chapter 1. We have to go to the beginning, even to know the ending or the renewing of this particular age or cycle. We have to begin at the beginning. To understand Revelation, you must know that which preceded Revelation. You see, there's a lot of folks that just get right into Revelation. They try to say, okay, this means that, the next thing means that, but they're not in the context. If you're not in the context, all you're dealing with is nonsense. So let's get out of that nonsense. The time is late. It's later than you think. It's later than we all think. So on the sixth day, the creation of man, in truth, the creation of the black man, the true man, the archetypal man, what the Jews call him the Kabbalah or Kabbalah, the, the Kadmon Adam, the Kedmon Adam. And we'll learn in this lesson that the Kedmon Adam was the true Ethiopian. The true Ethiopian was the, the Kedmon or the Kedmon, the Kedmon Adam from the Adama. And the Adama is that rich top soil that the Egyptians knew came from the Kui land or the God land, that top soil that came down, and it helped them form what's, what's known as that, 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 that fertile, that fertile region and the fertile region of the Nile and the fertile region of the Delta, where the ancient so-called God or the Net, uh, the Netaru or the Netaru family of Osiris, Isis, Horus, Suit, uh, Anubis, Anpu, and Nepti. So Nephet came forward. So Osiris is the true Osiris. Now let's make this clear. When we say the true Osar, the true Osiris, do not get it twisted by bad Egyptology, so forth and so on. It's like bad Christianity. If you look at bad Christianity, you'll believe that Caesar's Christ is Christ, or Caesar Borgia's is Christ. But if you study, you begin to recognize that that Jesus, the blonde hair, blue eye, was a Johnny Come Lately, was a make believe, was a mimicry, was an imitative that was made later on, but not the original 
Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. In the same way, the original archetypal Osar is different from the later Osar that people believe is Osiris. So we're going to the very root and the very beginning and the very truth. So we're here in Genesis. Let us review. We went over the Elohim, or in your Bibles, the God. That is a, mis a bad English, bad mistranslation. But we begin from where you know to get you to the truth where we got to go. Now, as we go through this, we learn some things very, very interesting about this original man. This original man was created in Elohim's image. But the Elohim says, let us. So there's more than one. And this word Elohim, when we check it out, actually means gods. Because the same word Elohim is used in other portions of the Bible to refer to the gods, both the true gods as well as the false gods. That means that the same very word could apply to the true or it could apply to the false. So what decides whether Elohim is applying to the true or Elohim is applying to the false? Well, it's the same key word that we teach by, and that is context. It is the context. Now we see that Ha Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth up on the earth. Verse 27, so Elohim created man in his, now it says. Now it changed from our to his, but check this out. Created man in his own image, in the image of Elohim, created he him then it says male and female created he them then it goes forward to say and elohim and elohim blessed them and elohim said to them bizu tabazu or be fruitful and multiply and here's the key replenish the earth in other words refill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Do you understand why when we go back to ancient mythologies, man saw himself in a relationship with the animal creation, but a lordship? It's like we look in ancient Egypt and we see that some of the deities or gods had human heads as man, but the earlier types had animal heads but the, or, or the zoo, the zoology images, but the latter had the anthropological or man. Here is the point that we have gone from the animal types to the man type. When man now recognized his true image in the image of the Elohim. Now, this may seem like an alien concept for a moment, and it might alienate some when we speak about black and black and black, because we've been alienated from this man-made world or from mankind's world. You ever notice how they always will say, we're doing this for mankind, mankind, mankind? They don't like to say we're doing this for man. But they like to, they even don't like to say humanity so much. But they love to say mankind. Mankind is a certain kind of man, but not the true man. And here we're speaking about the true man or the archetypal black man, fallen in this present world system and alienated from this world. Now, when we touch on the ET, the ET is the extraterrestrial, right? extraterrestrial. But now those from outer space, so-called, or aliens from other planets, in other words, if you come from another star, you're not an extraterrestrial properly. You are a celestial. The Bible speaks about the celestial. There's one kind of glory for the celestial. There's one kind of glory for the terrestrial. But what about the extraterrestrial? The extraterrestrial or the E.T., is the primordial Ethiopian, the Ethiops or the Tob of the New Aeon or the New Age. And here we have a new age coming into creation in this very beginning. Now, how do we know it's a uh, Tobian? Once again, let us review. A Tobian, we know right here as it goes forward, 
it says in verse 31, And Elohim saw everything that he had made, and behold, look and see, it was very good. In the Hebrew, it was not just tob properly. The Ashkenazis and the others say, in fourth Hebrew, they say tov, tov. Properly, it is tob, tob. Here, it says very good, or tob me'od, tob me'od. It was not just tov, but it was extra tov. It was extraterrestrial. Extraterrestrial, because it was not on the low land. You see, remember it says here in verse uh, 27, it says, Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. In other words, everything that's on the low land or the terrestrial level, the extraterrestrial, and don't get it twisted, we're not talking about um, people flying around in space saucers or flying ships. We're not speaking about the celestial now. We're speaking about the extraterrestrial or the primordial E.T., the Ethiopian, who Elohim says in the beginning wasn't just Tob, wasn't just good, but was Tob Ma'od. In the Hebrew, that means was very good, was extraterrestrial, was extra good, because everything else that was created... Every day you will see that he says, and it was good, and it was told, and it was told, and it was told. There's a geographical region spoken of here. Many would make you believe that it's speaking about just all over the earth, but it was focused on the navel or the cradle of the earth. And this was the ancient Tobia, which today humanity calls Ethiopia. But Ethiopia is not just that so-called small country. Ethiopia represents that part of the country connected with the rivers and the waters of Africa, spoken of as the Nile or the rivers of Ethiopia. Elsewhere it's called the Nile. We have it going all the way down to South Africa. And then the whole continent at one time was called Ethiopia or the good land. And those who in the beginning were to have dominion over the entirety of that new day creation was the extraterrestrial or the E.T., the Ethiopian, who was told my old, very good. Now, understanding that is the key. It's really a key to understanding the difference between three ideas that oftentimes are confused, even by some of these so-called experts. First of all, we have the E.T. or the original Ethiopians or Tobians who were E.T.'s, Tobmaod, extraterrestrials. They were on the extra terra. They were located in the roof of Africa or what could be called and was known as that heaven, that high land. They were in the highlands of the earth. They were in the heaven on the earth. They were in the extra part of the terror or the extra part of the terrestrial. But then we had those who dwelt on the land. Genesis tells us very well in this first chapter that there were those who, it says, let them have dominion, what? over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And furthermore, it says over every living thing that moveth upon the earth, everything that moveth. And later on, it says, and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the ear. The beast, how should we say, there was man-like beings, and, you know, they're finding these archaeologies, these bones and stuff, and they're dating it, and they're finding in one part of the world there are bones that seem to be more human-like, and then they find other bones which seem to be more ape-like or in some state of what they call evolution. Now you get all the whitewashed religionists out there that try to dismiss evolution because they originally did not want to say that they were descended from the original Cadmon or Cadmon Adam, the archetypal man who was the archetypal man who was the black man, the original black man. 
So the European or the white folks or the deceived people by Satan and Lucifer, so-called, are fighting against their own origins. They are fighting ultimately against themselves. But in the biblical context, they are fighting against God. So it should not surprise us we hear about COINTELPRO to stop the rise of the Messiah or the black Messiah. Because the only true Messiah, according to truth and God's word and reality, must be the black Messiah. Every other kind of so-called Messiah, your images and false delusions and vanity, all of that is a lie. Plain and simple. And biblically speaking, it qualifies that as the image of the beast. The beast. The beast. Don't we see it here about the beast? It says, and to every beast of the earth. Then it says that they will have dominion over all of the beasts of the earth. Hmm. Then if you look in Jonah. It says that man and beast wore sackcloth and fasted. Have you ever seen a cow fasting? Have you ever seen a cow wear sackcloth or a lion or a tiger wearing sackcloth? Never seen it. It was speaking of a type of, for lack of a better word, some people call it pre-Adamite. White races try to say the pre-Adamites were black people. In other words, it was the black people who were the pre-Adamites. But what's interesting is that ancient Egypt never seems to have had a so-called prehistoric evolutionary stage where, like in Europe and other parts of the world, the people seem to have evolved. They really didn't evolve in the sense that they tell you, but they were civilized by this original man that was made in God's image and after his likeness or the archetypal black man, and should we not forget that they were male and female, male and female. And essentially, this is what we have in the mystery or the mythology of ancient Egypt when viewed as Moshe or Moses viewed it in context and rightly coming from its Ethiopic source. Now, that's a point that needs to be understood. So we have these Tobians in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 31. Now, the, celestial are, the Celestials are the star people. Lucifer, as some call them, but more correctly, Satan or Sutan, Suta Typhonian, they were celestial star people that fell. Then we have the extraterrestrials or those who were in the Elohim or that alien nature, you know what I'm saying, who were in a higher nature, they were aliens to the terrestrials. The terrestrials were on a level that equated with beasts. Think about this for a moment. When it talks about the image of the beast, does anybody really worship so-called animals? No. The beast is talking about their nature, the nature. They do not have man's nature in the true sense of being in the image and of the likeness of the true God. They do not reflect the true God. Look at your world. Look at this world. It does not reflect the true God anymore, and it must be cleansed. And this is what the 2012 and the New Age and the alignment is all about. This alignment coming up is all about the cleansing. Well, what do we do? Where do we go? Some people are thinking about storing up food and going underground and something about going out in space and trying to find a place to hide themselves. You must go into the holy place. And it's not speaking about Jerusalem or a particular place on the face of the temporal earth. It's talking about a spiritual place. It's talking about your consciousness. You know what I'm must be not focused on the material things. For example, if one is still focused on things like this, on garbage like this, if one still thinks that the only God for them is this God, on this, the only one God is this $1 bill, unless one is able to turn that 
idea over in their heart and their mind and just use this. You understand? Know use this while it has usage. But don't set your heart on this because this is an idol. This is idolatry. This is this is the chief form of idolatry, and really, it's worthless. It's worthless. It's worth nothing. This is a collective delusion. So, though we may have to use this, recognize that it's a delusion. You understand? That's why one should, as it says, God loves a cheerful giver. You understand? Because you recognize this is really nothing. If it can help somebody out, give it. If it can help the ministry of God in Christ, give it. Use it. Pay your bills, but recognize the bill is a false god. All you're doing is giving to Caesar what is Caesar. But you must give to Yahweh in the name of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, what is his. Now, understanding that since the fall of man, fall from where? Where did man fall from? Well, if Adam, if the original prototypical man and couple, male and female, and that original family were extraterrestrials, and they were in the highlands, in the Kui land, in the God land. They were above those who were on the so-called lower terror level, or those who was on the terrestrial level, who many of them lived like animals. They lived like beasts, because they were not even of the spiritual sentience to receive the command or the word of the Almighty. They could not even understand the word. They barely even were able to make stone tools, much less to rule. Now, people say, well, if what you're saying is correct, where's all the trace of them? What trace would be of beings who were in the image and after the likeness of God? If you want to know, well, where were these original beings? Where can, would you want to find their bones? This is a very interesting thing. How come when they go back that far, they only find a few bones here and there. It, it, it's almost like they find a lot of animal bones, and so, but they only find a few human bones. And most of the bones that they find are not, how should we say, fully, quote, human, are still somewhat um, bestial in their nature. Well, beings who are not alienated from their true nature, their true God nature, when the cataball or the cataclysm came, they did not lose anything because they were not they were not stuck on the material, the physical or the worldly or the lower level. They were able, as the Bible shows you Christ, were able to go to the higher level. They were able to resurrect they were able to transfer themselves from this lower this lower being. And we're not talking about going up like in the sky and your clothing falling off and such and such, so forth and so on. That's nonsense. What we are speaking about is the same thing that happens when you transmute when you transmute water, when water evaporates. Water evaporates and it goes up into the clouds and it comes down as rain. Isn't it interesting? that the human body is majority water, that the majority of what's in the human body is water, and even those things that seem hard and, and of substance is basically water at certain vibrational frequencies. See, man has lost his God nature, and instead he's living in the nature of the beast. Instead he's living in a foreign or an alien nature and he has been alienated from the knowledge of self and from his 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 true his true image his true likeness this is why i do accept what some of the 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 reflective wisdom spiritualists out there when they talk that well what they're trying to do the so-called cruel world lucifer satanic world order is make people believe that man is wicked and man is bad and man there's nothing good in man because that's a satanistic agenda. That's a sat to to rob man. In other words, Satan has put this thought into man's head and heart. And every time you keep seeing this wickedness and this evil and inhumanity and injustice of man to man, it creates within those who see that unreality 
that's that should be seen as something foreign. That is a product of the God of this world. That's not has anything doesn't have anything to do with the true God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMoshiach, or with the true nature, the true nature of man. That is part of a programming. That is part of a some say a six thousand year old programming. So man has become alienated from the true Elohim, from the Trinity, from the Word of God, from the Amen, and from his own nature as children of God. So this particular lesson right here is to help clarify, hopefully, a little bit better this uh, alien ET extraterrestrials. The first thing is to recognize what and who is an ET. The ETs are not beings from so-called other star worlds. Those are celestials. Those are celestials. It, it, it may seem, people may say it's semantic, so forth and so on, but so is the N-word. So is the nigger word. But there's a whole lot embedded in it. And from for different people, different people um, vibrate differently to that, just like different people vibrate differently to the truth. And this also demonstrates their core and their essential nature. As the wisdom said of old and is still true today, man, know thyself. Rek chino. Shalom. Rastafari.